Hi there and welcome to this feature tutorial for Motion Matching for Unity. In this quick tutorial we're going to take a deep dive into idle sets, how to set them up, what they're used for and why they even exist in the first place. Now motion matching isn't very good at idle animations. This is because idle doesn't have a lot of motion and therefore there is a dedicated idle system in MXM that uses motion matching to match between the idle and the, the locomotion but while it's playing idle animations, it just keeps playing the idle animations you specify. There's no reason to jump between clips at this point unless we're doing things like a little bit of flare animation in our idle. And we're going to cover all of that. Now, if we look at our character now, he's playing a basic idle animation. And he's going to keep playing that for a while. And every now and again, you're going to see he does something different. Let's just wait for that and see what he does. I think it's very subtle in this normal idle animation. There we go, he's checking his feet, he's shifting his weight, and we can also transition to our combat and we'll see a similar thing. He'll do some taunts or something like that. Let's have a look. Okay, there you go, he spun his sword. And now he's doing some other kind of taunt. Yeah, come get me, mate. All right, so there you have it. So you can play these. We have our standard idols, and then every now and again, it can play the secondary flare idol. Now, there's one more feature that I want to show before we actually look at how it's done, and that is idle transitions. So you can see here, when I transition to the crouch, technically, um, without this transition feature, it would just blend instantly between the two, and you wouldn't get an animation. Now, there's an actual stand stand to like idle to crouch and crouch to idle animation being played in between these and this is the idle transition system so that's something else that i'm also going to show you in the idle sets so now that we've seen all of those features let's stop playing and have a look at how do we set that up in the preprocessor more specifically in our idle sets i'm going to close all these um, fold outs because we don't want to see them. We've got the animation data and idle sets. Now in the quick start guide we set up just one idle set. We just we didn't even look at the editor we just dragged the one animation in and that's just fine. Now let's have a look at what an idle set looks like in here. So here it's a bit more complex. By default when we drag in our first idle animation we just get this middle big box filled. This is our primary idle for the idle set. This is the standard idle that is always playing. So here we have it and we can, the second row here is our secondary idle. So these are all the little flare idles. So if I create another inspector and we can click on one of these boxes and go locate animation. Let's have a look at these. So this is one of the secondary idles. It sort of just looks down a little bit. It's, re it's really quite subtle. Um, let's locate the standard idle. And I can locate this one, have a look, see what they do. So you can see that these secondary idols I've added as flare idols. These are just sort of shifting weight there. It's not, there's not a whole lot going on there. So how do we now control how often those secondary idols play? Well, we have this min loops and max loops parameters here. So basically it's the system, every time it goes into this primary idle, it says, okay, how many loops am I going to play this idle until I play a secondary idle? This is where we set this. We can set a random range between uh, one to four. So when we start our primary idle, it says, okay, let's find a random number of loops between our specified one to four, say it's three. We're going to play this primary idle three times, and then we're going to play one of these secondary idles through one loop, and then we go back to the primary. Now the system will ensure that these secondary idols never play twice in a row, um, unless it's the only one there. It'll keep trying to pick a different one each time, and it'll play this primary for X amount of loops between your min and max loops. So that's pretty damn simple. So our transition system here is where, where is up the top. Now this is where we drag in our transition animations. So for an idle set, so this is an idle set for just standing still, right? It's non-combat, it's non-crouching, and we can tell by our tags here. Now, you may not have seen the tags tutorial, but just know the tags are a way of, um, in, in this particular case, they're being used to specify that an animation is for a stance, so crouching, combat. And let's have a quick look at that, actually, 
if we go to our, we've got multiple idle sets here and we've got one for crouching and you can see our require tag is set to crouch. And this is where we have our crouch idle. In this case, there's no secondary animations, but we have some transitions. One is idle to crouch. So if we go back to our first one, the idea is that in our transition animations, we put any animation that transitions to this idle we put in the top. In this case, I've only got crouch to idle. I have in the past used like your actual walk forward stops as transitions, and that does work. It just depends on your animation set. You can see I've actually still got that here in the crouch idle. I've got crouch, walk forward, stop left, and crouch, walk forward, stop right. Because those animations end with the crouch idle, it can be considered a transition. However, you don't need those. This is more just for idle to crouch. Now, if you don't have these transition animations set in, it's still going to work. Um, it's just going to have a, um, a blend between your standing and your crouching or, or whatever animations you're going in between. We also have our combat idle sets and you can see we've got our um, taunts and lowering the sword and all these secondary animations and we can see that the tag is required. Just a quick recap, recap these tags are user defined. You actually define them under tags and you can define all your stances here. They're not just used for stances um, but a lot of the time they are Either way, watch the tags tutorial when that comes out and that will explain tagging to the nth degree in detail. This is just about the animation idle set system. So that's actually pretty much all there is to it. This is animation idle sets. We've got primaries, we've got secondaries, we've got transitions, we can set how often it loops. Now, the system is automatically going to detect when you are in an idle state based on your user input. So you'll be running around and you know, you'll let go of the stick and your character will come to a stop and then it'll trigger this idle state, if you will. Now, MXM actually does have an internal state machine that's very simple that, and idle state is one of those, locomotion is another and event system is another. It's not a state machine like an animation state machine, it's more like an internal logic state machine for how motion matching operates. So there we have it, idle sets explained. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. We're still going to go through blend spaces and tagging and all that in heavy detail. I'll see you next time.